Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tucker. This is Sporting Logically, and this is Free Agent Friday on a Saturday, a weekly series in which I take a look at an upcoming free agent and look at the circumstances of their free agency, what kind of contract they could sign, and which teams they could sign with. This week's subject is Jabari Parker of the Milwaukee Bucks. Parker finds himself in a strange situation for a guy that is just one year removed from averaging over 20 points per game in 51 games in the 2016-17 season. Still just 23 years old, the former second overall pick enters restricted free agency this offseason with a large amount of uncertainty surrounding him. Nobody has questioned his talent level to this point in his career, but concerns about his defensive ability and, above all else, his durability make his free agency a difficult one to predict. Having played just over 45 games a season on average so far in his four-year career, Parker has nonetheless gotten the public support of Buck superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo, but the team's desire to bring him back is still in question. It stands to reason that a franchise such as Milwaukee would almost have to bring back a player of Parker's potential, as they don't have many other avenues to try and pair another star with the Greek Freak. But with a payroll that's already shockingly high for a small market team, they will have to take into serious consideration the risk involved in signing a player with a history of knee injuries to a big contract with an equally big payroll on the horizon and playoff success far from guaranteed. When healthy, Parker is a great NBA scorer that has all the versatility on that end that teams look for in a combo forward, even increasing his three-point percentage to an above-league average level. Under ordinary circumstances, a player with his combination of talent, youth, and skill set would be a no-brainer $20-plus million a year player. But as I mentioned previously, these are not ordinary circumstances. The Bucks and Parker apparently engaged in contract negotiations during this past season, but there were conflicting reports about whether or not an offer was actually made. One thing that's pretty widely agreed on, however, is that the Bucks' top number in terms of annual salary in a contract offer for Parker was $18 million. Whether or not that offer was actually made, that's probably the high point of his value this summer. With everything considered, I would imagine Parker would sign a three-year deal for between $12 to $18 million a year. In terms of the length of the deal, the relatively short three-year term allows the team in question to limit their long-term risk should he continue to struggle with injuries, while on the other hand, if Parker regains his pre-injury form, he can re-enter free agency at 26 years old in time to cash in on a big deal when his value is at its highest. As for the price estimate, as I talk about weekly, there just isn't as much cap space around the league this summer as many fans have grown accustomed to recently, and those teams that have the space to sign him outright are well aware of the Bucks' payroll issues, and that it might not take a crazy offer to pry him away from the team with a deal that they wouldn't be willing to match. The annual salary prediction is a much wider range than I normally give in these videos, but that's simply because of the unpredictability of this particular case. There are really so many different ways Parker's free agency could go that it makes it extremely difficult to give an accurate estimate. In terms of which teams Parker could sign with, let's begin with his current team, the Milwaukee Bucks. As I briefly mentioned earlier, the Bucks are in desperate need of some extra star power in their lineup in order to be considered serious contenders in the East. And without many other means to acquire one, retaining Parker and hoping he regains his pre-injury form might just be their best option. I've no doubt that the team would like to have him on the roster again next season, and as the holder of his restricted free agency rights, they'll have the option of matching any contract offer that comes his way. But I can't emphasize enough how much consideration the team will be giving to bringing him back on a reasonable contract rather than just by any means necessary. The opportunity to play alongside the Greek Freak is an intriguing one, and the Bucks nearly knocked off the Boston Celtics in the first round of this year's playoffs, even with Parker playing like a shell of his former self in his return from injury. As we all know, that banged up Celtics team went on to nearly make the NBA Finals, and maybe with a fully healthy Jabari Parker, the Bucks could have been in that position instead. With that reasoning in mind, the young forward might just see it to be in his best interest to re-sign with the team that drafted him on a reasonable deal, with his eye on a bigger payday in a few years. Next up is really a handful of teams that could throw a big offer sheet Parker's way in an effort to pry him away in restricted free agency. Teams like the Brooklyn Nets have a history of offering restricted free agents big money in an attempt to make their original team flinch on matching such a big contract. They really haven't been that successful in that yet, but I would keep an eye on any of those teams that have cap space and could be in the market for a young, high upside scoring forward. The problem is that if a team truly wants to take him away from the Bucks, they'll likely have to offer him a contract in excess of $20 million a year. 
there are only about seven teams that realistically have that much cap space to spend this summer, and almost all of them have either been linked to other free agents, aren't in a hurry to spend big money this summer, or just wouldn't seem like a good fit for Parker when you consider all the risks that come with signing him. I'm not saying it's impossible that a team offers him a contract that the Bucks wouldn't be willing to match, just that it's pretty unlikely. That just leaves one option, one that is in my opinion the most interesting one, a sign and trade. This avenue realistically puts a lot more teams on the table that could bring in Parker. Let's just say for the sake of argument that any sign and trade deal would involve Parker signing a three-year deal for $18 million a year. In this scenario, the Nets could trade D'Angelo Russell for Parker straight up and still be under the cap. Denver could get Parker in a sign and trade with Will Barton as well. As I mentioned in a previous GM Monday, the Jazz could also be in play. This isn't a Trade Machine Tuesday episode, so I'm going to stop there, but the point is that while it is impossible to predict which team he could be signed and traded to, it opens up a ton of possibilities. In the end, if I had to throw out a team that I see as the most likely one for Parker to play on that isn't the Bucks next season, it would be the Brooklyn Nets. Depending on what the salary cap is officially set at for next season, they could have just enough space to offer him a contract at the very top of the scale I mentioned earlier, around $18 million a year, and that might just be enough to make the Bucks flinch. It would be a big risk, but it could also pay off in a huge way, all while maintaining a significant chunk of the 2019 cap space the team is on pace to have. Pairing a pre-injury Parker with some of the other players they have on the roster, could start to form a pretty promising core that would begin to get them out of the Kevin Garnett-sized hole Billy King dug the franchise in not long ago. However, as interesting as it is to look at all the other possibilities for places that Parker could end up, in the end I think he'll end up playing for the Bucks next season. I've wavered on this for a while now, but I believe that ultimately they won't be able to let go of a player with Parker's potential so easily. Signing him to a market value deal will already put them at or above the luxury tax for next season, but that seems like the price they're going to have to pay. Personally, I would try and sign and trade him for some cheaper complementary options or cap relief with a more sustainable approach in mind. But again, in the end, he'll likely end up playing for the Bucks next season regardless, and they'll end up trying to deal with the salary cap mess they've created in other ways. And that is the end of the video. I thank you all very much for watching. Next up is General Manager Monday in a couple of days, so be on the lookout for that. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.